Welcome back to our IB Physics video series. This is the first video in IB Physics Topic 1, Measurements and Data, where we will be looking at units, significant figures, and scientific notation. In physics, there are two types of units, fundamental units and derived units. Let's go through them. Fundamental units are considered naturally occurring quantities, and there are a few you need to be aware of. Mass, measured in kilograms, length, measured in meters, time, measured in seconds, electric current, measured in amperes, amount, measured in moles, temperature, measured in kelvin, and light intensity, measured in candelas. Derived units are formed by dividing or multiplying fundamental units. There are also a few you need to be aware of. Speed, measured in meters per second, Acceleration, measured in metres per second squared. Force, measured in newtons. Pressure, measured in pascals. Frequency, measured in hertz. Energy, measured in joules. Power, measured in watts. Charge, measured in coulombs. Voltage, measured in volts. And resistance, measured in ohms. Although memorising units can seem arduous, it is important to recall and utilise the appropriate units in every answer of your IB exam to get full marks. So, every one of these units has a value, called its magnitude. However, units can be further subdivided into two groups, scalars and vectors. Scalars only have a magnitude, whereas vectors have both a magnitude and direction. A classic example the IB expects you to remember is distance versus displacement. Distance is a scalar and thus not direction dependent, whereas displacement is a vector and is direction dependent. For example, if you travel 1.5 kilometers from home to school and back, the distance traveled is three kilometers, but the displacement is zero since you start and end at the same position. Other common scalars to remember are speed, mass, time, work and power. Other common vectors to remember are velocity, acceleration, force, momentum and field strength. Since vectors have a direction, they can be visualised in two dimensions with an arrow. This can then be broken down into its x and y components by the process termed resolving. This forms a triangle, wherein the different components can be calculated using sine, cosine and tangent. It is important to understand that vectors can undergo addition or subtraction with other vectors. This is done with the head-tail rule, where the head of the first vector is connected to the tail of the second vector. Doing so creates the start and end points of the resultant vector. Other than correct units, a correct answer must have the correct number of significant figures, often abbreviated to sig figs. As a rule, the number of sig figs for your answer should match the lowest number of sig figs used in the question. But how do you tell what this is? Well, there are a few rules that you need to know to identify the number of sig figs in a number. Sig figs are counted starting at the first non-zero number. All numbers and zeros after this are significant. However, any zeros at the end of a number without a decimal point may or may not be significant. It gets complicated here, so we use scientific notation. Let's look at a few examples. 0 0.7340 has four sig figs. 0 0.0023 has two sig figs. 0 0.0809 has three sig figs. And 12,300 has either three, four, or five sig figs, depending on if the value was rounded to the nearest 100 10 or 1, respectively. When given values, we assume the largest number of significant figures, i.e. here, 5. However, when answering, we round our answer to the lowest number of significant figures given. So, in an example question, a car travels at 120 meters per second for 360 meters. How long did the car travel? So, speed equals distance divided by time, and thus the time is 3 seconds. Both 120 and 360 have 2 or 3 sig figs, but as they are not in scientific notation, we will assume 3. So the answer must also have 3 sig figs. 
Thus, the final answer would be written as 3.00. In a second example question, sound travels at a speed of 320 meters per second. How far does sound travel in 30 minutes? So, speed equals distance divided by time, and so, remembering to convert minutes to seconds, the distance would be 576,000 meters. 320 has two or three sig figs, and 30 has one or two sig figs. But as they are not in scientific notation, we assume three and two respectively. Since we use the smallest number of sig figs when the provided values do not match, the answer must have two sig figs. We assume our value of 576,000 meters has six sig figs, as we assume time and speed were measured to the nearest one. Thus, the final answer, rounded to two sig figs, is 580,000 meters, i.e. 580 kilometers. Earlier in this video, we mentioned scientific notation. But what is it? Well, it is a way of writing numbers to avoid ambiguity in decimal places, as we just saw. It works by taking the decimal place and moving it, so the number lies between 1 and 9.99. This number is then multiplied by 10 to a power that equals the number of decimal places we move to the left. Here are a few examples of how to write numbers in scientific notation. 15,049 in scientific notation would become 1.5049 times 10 to the 4, which has 5 sig figs. 0 0.7340 in scientific notation would become 7.340 times 10 to the minus 1, which has 4 sig figs. 0 0.0023 in scientific notation would become 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3, which has 2 sig figs. And 0 0.0809 in scientific notation would become 8.09 times 10 to the minus 2, which has 3 sig figs. Note. In the last three, the power is negative as we are moving the decimal point to the right when creating the number between 1 and 9.99. So, let's review the number 12,300. If it had been rounded to the nearest 100, we would express it as 1.23 times 10 to the 4, i.e. 3 sig figs. To the nearest 10, we would express it as 1.230 times 10 to the 4, i.e. 4 sig figs and to the nearest 1, we would express it as 1.2300 times 10 to the 4, i.e. 5 sig figs. The question should either give the measurement in scientific notation, or provide the degree of accuracy to which the answer was rounded. However, commonly it does not. So, assume the largest number of significant figures when using values. However, as mentioned earlier, for your answer, round to the lowest number of significant figures given. So, let's take a look at an example. A car travels at 1.20 times 10 to the 2 meters per second for 30 seconds. How far did the car travel? So, speed equals distance divided by time, and thus the distance is 3,600 meters. 1.20 times 10 to the 2 has 3 sig figs, and we assume 30 has 2 sig figs. We use the smallest number of sig figs when the provided values do not match, so the answer must have two sig figs. Thus, the final answer is 3.6 kilometers, or 3.6 times 10 to the 3 meters, or 3,600 meters, as these all round to two sig figs. As you may see, scientific notation allows long numbers to be condensed. However, we can also use unit prefixes for the same effect. Certain powers of 10 correlate to specific prefixes, as shown in the table below, along with their abbreviations. Remember, always write your answer with the units the problem asks for. You have now covered all of the content you need for units, significant figures, and scientific notation. We hope you enjoyed the first video in our IB Physics Topic 1 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards, and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.